So, as always, unless you've already done it, change the cross on the legs. So to me, this um, is a reminder to um, step into the place of what is not familiar, of uh, being open to explore the places in me that are kind of slightly hidden. And bringing fingertips to the earth. So just checking in through the body, first of all, finding your sit bones. So really making sure you're making a connection to whatever you're sitting on. And then starting from the feet, pressing the sides of the feet down, having a sense of the connection of the top of the legs, going into the hip sockets. <laughs> the knees descending to the earth. The stability that you need through your foundations. So the stability of the ankles, the containment of the outer hips. And then a sense of your tailbone drawing down into the earth. So you start to Do you start to find what feels um, stable in you? What you need for stability? So each exhalation draws you a little deeper down, brings about more sense of self. And now as you inhale, start to ascend so lightly pushing into your fingertips, finding your spine growing. It's like the flower that grows continually up towards the light and then finally blooms. And having this sense of that, there's a, a reading if I can find, I was trying to look for it. Uh -huh, yeah. So the pain of becoming for the flower, it is fully open at each step of its blossom, blossoming. We do ourselves a great disservice by judging where we are in comparison to some final destination. This is one of the pains of aspiring to become something. The stage of development we are in is always seen against the imagined landscape of what we are striving for. So where we are, though closer all the time, is never quite enough. A simple rose at each moment of its slow blossoming is as open as it can be. The same is true in our lives. In each stage of our unfolding, we are stretched. We are as stretched as possible, for the human heart is quite slow to blossom, and it is only seen as lacking when compared to the imagined lover or father or mother we'd like to become. So just before we chant together, just have the sense of just being in your body as it is now. A sense of being centered in your life as it is now. And then bringing the palms of the hands together. We'll do three rounds of the Gayatri Mantra still. This mantra that 
it's an honoring of the life giving qualities of the sun. But can nothing exist on this planet without the sun, without the sun's light? And how that light also resides inside us. Exhaling with the breath, inhaling together. Om Become humble, the mind becomes humble towards the heart. And lifting the heart and releasing. And then just coming off all of your blocks and coming on to all fours. Just bringing a little bit of um, movement through the spine to begin with. So as you inhale, lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, rounding through the spine. So as you move, there's nowhere to get to. There is a noticing of what your body is like this morning. There's a noticing of what your breathing is like this morning. And also a noticing of what the mind space is like this morning. And as you explore, you might find just like the, the petals of the rose start to gradually unfurl, that a little bit more space becomes apparent in either the body, the breath, or the mind. Then coming to a neutral position and then bringing the big toes to touch and then sink the sit bones back. So if you do have bricks, I always like doing my first. Forward, my first um, child's pose with the arms extended onto bricks because it helps me bring some more space into my back. So remember, the, there's no aim here. So you're not trying to get close to the ground. So don't drop the head. Think of your the undulations of the spine and the, the neck is a continuation of your spine. And so if you just drop your head to the ground, all you're doing is rounding enormously through one of the most flexible parts of your spine. So how can you create more space? So 
So it helps to see ourselves as flowers. This is a continuation of the reading from Mark Necco. If a flower were to push itself open faster, which it can't, it would tear. Yet we humans can and often do push ourselves. Often we tear in places no one can see. When we push ourselves to unfold faster and more deeply than is natural, we thwart ourselves. For nature takes time, and most of our problems will stem from impatience. You hear? Slowly coming up. Keeping that remembrance of the space that you've created in your back, coming up onto a pause, tuck the toes under, push back into down and close the door. So take a moment in the full shape, just to become aware of where it feels tight, where it feels congested, where it feels heavy. And then bend both knees. And try and create a little bit more space through the spine, first of all. And then as you straighten both legs, trying to create more space, either in the lower legs or the upper legs. You might want to do that a few times, bending the knees. So you're working alternately with one end of your body and then the other. Then coming down to the knees, crossing the ankles behind you. You're going to rock all the way back to so lie down on your back. If you have a strap, grab a, grab a strap. If you can do a little bit of work on the hamstring. So with the knees bent and the pelvis level, Taking the strap over the ball of the right foot. So remember as we start to lift the leg, there's a tendency to shorten on the right outer hip. So bring that, almost have a sense of your sit bone drawing towards the end of your mat. And so the right side of the body stays equal in length to the left side of the body. And now as you inhale, lift up through the heel. So you start to lengthen through the back of your leg. And as you exhale, draw the leg a little closer towards you. So remember you're engaging the, the muscles um, up the front line of the body. So that's the active part of the front line of the leg. And the back of the leg is more passive. We're just exploring here what could create more space. Or might be more stability. Or more awareness. Then slowly extend the opposite leg out. So you're keeping both legs super straight, pushing front of thighs, back of thigh on both legs. And again, just checking to the sides of the body, or both sides of the body of equal length. What is happening to your shoulders? So expand your awareness not just having it rooted in the legs, but expand it out to encompass more of your body.
And then holding on to the strap, you're going to bend, I know you're not going to, yes, you're going to bend the knee, and you're going to take the strap in the left hand, and you're going to roll over onto your left side, taking your foot with you. So you might very well need a brick <coughs> here to place the foot on. You're looking to aim to get the leg in line with your hip. And then lifting the right arm up, taking it all the way over behind you. So coming into a twist. So your underneath shoulder can get trapped. You might want to lift that shoulder up and take it more towards the left, which will free up then this um, opening. So you're turning the navel to the right. You're turning your heart to the right, the shoulders to the right. So it's the rib cage that is turning. And again, there's no, there's no place to get to. So we can kind of get a little bit obsessed about getting the shoulder to touch the ground. But if you focus more on, on the turning element, Okay, and then from here, lifting the right leg up and lowering it down. Now just take a moment just to be, be aware of changes. And then bending those knees and then lifting the left leg up. But Take your brick over to the left side and make sure you've got enough room to do your twist on that side. And then <clears throat> left leg loose. And again, you're looking at keeping the hips level, the outer kick drawing down towards the end of your mat. So you're keeping the sides of the body long and symmetrical with each other. And then as you inhale, you're lifting through the heel, as you exhale, the leg draws a little closer. Perhaps also noticing what is happening with your foot. And you might want to just play a little bit with that. So are you rolling to the inside? This is what will tend to happen when you stand up. Or you might be tilting towards the outside. Notice what happens if you really flex the foot or you point the toes. And what happens if you find something somewhere in the middle? And how does it all affect your leg? And then extending the opposite leg along the ground. <coughs> And here, if you have tight hamstrings, you might have to back the leg off a little bit in order to accommodate the change that you've made. And then Holding the strap with the right hand now, bend the knee and take yourself all the way over onto your right side. And then extending the leg out directly from the hip. So you can use the edge of your mat as a guide as to whether the body is straight or at an angle. You're looking for straight. And then as you take the opposite arm back, free the underneath shoulder. And now just explore this turning action of the navel, the heart, the shoulder.
Keep a slight awareness in the um, right leg because that's your grounding, your anchoring. So make sure you're pushing front of thigh to back of thigh on that leg. And releasing. And then just hug the knee in and rock all the way up. Cross the ankles, come over onto hands and knees. And then pushing back again, downward facing dog. <clears throat> Bend the knees, find a sense of length through the spine again, and now straighten both legs. I'm hoping that this might be a little easier for you now. If you look towards the gap, can you slightly take the heels out so you've got more of an internal rotation? So it's very slight. Keep lengthening the spine and then take the feet wide. So walk them almost towards the edge of your mat. Keep pushing the weight back into the sit bones. So the sit bones are drawing back and slightly up. And then rock onto the side of the feet. You're still drawing the sit bones back. Inhale back to center, exhale the opposite side. So you're balanced on the instep of the right leg and the outside of the left leg, like outside the left foot. Inhale back to center, exhale rock. But try not to come into plank, <laughs> which is easy to do. Zoe. <laughs> Inhale back to center. Exhale, opposite side. And one more on each side. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Inhale back to center. Walk the feet towards the hands and the knees. Drape yourself down over your thighs. So, as we usually do here, make sure that your insteps are parallel to one another. And then as you hold on to the elbows, try and lift the sit bones up. And allow the weight of the elbows to draw the spine further towards the earth. Again, it's this sense of um, humility, of the head, the head going below the heart. There's no striving anywhere, which tends to come from the mind space. There's no comparison. There's just a being. Trying to lift the sit bones a little higher. Trying to lengthen, allow the spine to lengthen. Again, there's no pushing in this or forcing, there's an allowance. But I think it's in the allowance that we discover what it is that's stopping us. Because we suddenly see the blocks. Release the hands to the ground, spread the fingers, and then walk the feet back into your downward dog. So as you come into plank first, so that you know that you've got the hands in the right place. Draw tailbone towards heel to find your own strength. Push against the earth. Take the gaze forwards. The tailbone back, front of the pelvis towards the heart. Hold it here. 
And now pull back, downward facing dog. So we have you been too short in your downward dogs. And now bend the knee. Try and create a similar action to what you had in your Uttanasana a minute ago. And then straighten both legs. Come forwards into plank. Draw the right knee to the outside of the right elbow. And then stack it back. Left knee. So we're in plank. Stay in plank. So don't move anything apart from the legs. So establish your sense of stability and control of power. One more on each side. What do you need to do to give more stability? Michelle, stop bobbing around. <laughs> and then come down onto the knee and bring the big toes together and sink the sit bones back. So you might stay up on your fingertip in order to find a little bit more length through the spine again. And slowly walk the hand back. Okay, so finding your two breaks. So, um, Let's see what happened this way around. If you want a little bit more cushion, we can roll your mat over there, okay? And if you have a block, put a block there beside of them or a blanket. So we're going to open up the back a little bit more. You know, rest your shoulder blades on the bricks. Softening the shoulder blades. Lift the arms up, keep the knees bent, and then try and soften the lower ribs. And then holding on to alternate elbows, shape the elbows back. Again, this is an exploration. There's nowhere to go other than to allow openings to happen, or awareness, so that sense of um, little tiny light bulb moments happening. Be aware of your breathing. To continually soften your lower ribs. Can you lengthen your forearms to the wall beyond your head? Traction, tailbone towards the heels. The thinking of the rose gently uncurling its petals. When we see elbows up, change the clasp on the elbows and bringing the elbows back. There. Although they're releasing towards the earth, that doesn't happen from you popping your lower ribs up. I want you to keep maintain this sense of symmetry of being in the right place. And then this allowance of softening to happen. The last couple of breaths here. Be aware of how it feels to have the bricks gently guiding your shoulder blades in towards the back of your heart. 
And how much resistance are you playing out to that happening? And then releasing the arms, you roll over onto one side. And then I'm going to see if we can, if that has loosened the back of the heart and that first it can lose you and the heart and the So keeping the pelvis over the knees, in a slide two straight arms forward. And now see if you can almost um, if somebody were to gently place their hand on your shoulder blade, but on that back of the heart area, could you allow yourself to soften even more? And how much guarding do you hold around the back of your heart? So we slide forward for a little bit more. Yeah, and a bit more. Melt. So in the yin practice, this is actually called melting heart. Okay, from here, I want you to strongly push into the hands and the forearm, and now draw yourself forwards. So from here, you're drawing yourself forwards until you come flat onto your belly. Elbows are now under the shoulders. Take the feet a little bit wider. Okay, so find your roots here. So the stability of the legs. So engage the hamstrings, engage the lower part of your glutes so the legs become strong and active as much as if they were doing plank pose. And now draw your pubic bone into the ground like a, a tap root. So when we're sitting, we use the tailbone. Here we're using the pubic bone. And now start to draw the front of the pelvis up towards the heart. At the same time, traction the elbow back, which will help draw the lower tip of your shoulder blade in towards the back of your heart. Again, we're trying to create that sense of the melting heart. So lift your sternum up. So feel a rising, like the heart is, uh, is buoyant, like from helium. So feel it lifting up, up, up that you're tethered, you're grounded by these strong legs and the connection to the earth by the pubic bone. Okay, notice how much space you're creating in your spine. And then release down, place the forehead on the earth, slide the hands back by the shoulders just underneath the shoulders. And then roll the shoulders up, back and down. So some little shoulder shrugs. And then inhale, lengthen and rise up. Ujjangasana, take the shoulders up, back and down again. Up, back and down. So find your shoulder mobility in this back bend. And release down. One last one. Inhale. Rising, keep control of the legs. And rolling the shoulders. Hold it here. Test the strength of your back. Can you take the hands away? So how much do you end up collapsing? <laughs> 
and then lightly push into the fingertips. So now you're getting a little bit of arm. So know how much arm strength you're using to gain that um, mobility through the back and how much of it is your actual back. <laughs> okay, release down. Tuck the toes under. Oh, actually bring the elbows forward. Let's come up into elbow dog. It's a bit of a challenge for you. So check that the shoulder, the elbows are right under the shoulder. Okay. And then tuck the toes under. You're going to walk the knees in a little bit. And then lift up. And then walk the feet in a little bit. There's a tendency here for the elbows to splay out to the side. So you're going to have to almost drag them towards one another. And then keep lifting the sit bones up. Push into the forearms. Shoulder blades down your back. And then come down onto the knees. Yeah, turn the palms up. And then sink back. Extended child, but with the palms turning up. Don't drop the head. Keep the head in line with the rest of your spine. Be aware of how this feels on your shoulders. Can you traction your tailbone towards your heels a little bit more? And then turn the hands over. And then from here, tuck the toes under. We're going to sit back on the heels, flexing through the feet. So you can come forwards a little bit if it's too much on your toes, or if you're able to, coming all the way back and then bringing the hands into prayer. I have to say, I sit like this a lot. But I'm blessed with flexible feet. There's many other parts of me that aren't very flexible, and I wish that they were as flexible as my feet. But one of the reasons is because I do things like this a lot. Whereas I'm sure if I did a lot of back bends throughout the day, my back would probably start to become more flexible. To stay with rising sensations. Can you just be? Okay, and then bring the hands forwards. Push back down the dog. Then stepping the right foot forwards in between the hands. You're going to spin on the back foot. You want it at a slight angle, heel to instep alignment. And then slide up your leg, coming into trikonasana as you come. Push through the outside edge of the back foot in order to stabilize the back leg. Make sure that the knee of the front leg is pointing forwards. Lift the toes of the front foot and span out across the ball of your foot. Pull up through shins, knees, quads, especially on that front leg. So what you're doing with your forward bend. And now can you start to lengthen your spine, especially as you do this, notice where your head is in space. And then I don't know if you can all, but you're all facing away from the trunks. Try and have a sense. So when I had you um, working with your leg and the strap on the ground, I was mentioning about keeping, there's a, a tendency to shorten on the right side of the body when you lift the right leg up. And you need to draw the right outer hip back towards the end of your mat. The same thing applies here. Can you find a sense of length and symmetry to both sides of your body? 
And from here, start to bend the front knee, placing the elbow on the front knee. And you're going to sweep this top arm. You're going to bring it horizontal to the earth and then take it all the way over your head and now extend through to the fingertips. Sink the weight into that front leg so it becomes more, the thigh becomes almost horizontal to the earth. But keep a sense of connection to the ground with the back foot. Now start to spin navel and heart towards the earth, the sky. And taking your gaze that way too. So remember there's no striving here. We're exploring. Where's your white sit bone gone? Is it still drawing towards the end of your mat or has it pivoted towards the side of your mat? Okay, from here, sweep the arm in a big arc down. Use that back hand now to pull you up into warrior two. Check that the front knee is tracking in line with your toes. And again, stability is held through the back leg, the back foot, also now the back arm. So it's like you're anchored in your past. Be very present, but you can take your gaze towards the future just to see what's out there. Keep drawing the tailbone towards the earth, front of the pelvis lifts. Notice your breath. And now windmill, arms towards the ground. Leave it on the back foot. Step back into down the dog. We either stay here and rest or come down onto the knee and sit back into it for the child. Your choice. So take a moment of reflection. And is there anything that you need to, to change in attitude, mind space, awareness as we come up and do the other side? So coming up, down the facing dog. And then taking the left foot forward, so I'm just going to turn around. I should take it all the way. <laughs> I love you. So, from here, down facing dog, you're going to take your right foot forward, uh, sorry, left foot forward. Pivot on the back foot, so the back foot's at an angle, check you've got heels in, step alignment. And then you're sliding up the front leg, left leg into Trikonasana. As you unfurl, like the flower. So now check your roots through the back foot, the outside edge of the back foot. You make the toes of the front foot span out across the ball of the foot. Draw the energy up through the front line of the legs. And now lengthen. So now I think all of you can see yourselves in your cameras. So now, are you bananaing the underside of the body, or are you lengthening it? So spreading from the heart to the fingertips, turning navel, heart, finding the shoulders. This is like a, a twist on top of the legs. And start to bend the front knee, bringing the elbow to rest on the knee, Pajvakanasana. So, keeping the anchoring down through the back foot, allow the arm to drop so it's horizontal to the ground. Then slicing it over by the head, extend now. So 
tummy, navel, heart, gaze towards the sky. Noticing where the left sit bone is. Is it pivoting towards the side of your mat or can you draw it more towards the back end of your mat, towards the back heel? Can you sink a little lower in the front leg? Michelle, notice where your arm is. So your arm is stuck up somewhere here. So I want it to extend. So can you, how much of a straight line can you get from your back heel to, to your fingertips? Much better. <laughs> okay, from here, here's the top hand. Draw it down in an arc. So you're finding control and stability here as you now come up into warrior two. So check that the knees tracking down the center toes. So it's much harder to do slow, as you're probably realizing. And again, anchor through the back leg, back arm. Draw the front of the pelvis up, the tailbone down. Find a sense of symmetry through both sides of the body. And then extend out through the fingertips. Okay, pivot the hands down towards the earth. And then this time we're going to walk the hands around to the center, adjust the feet so the toes are in line with one another. Fingertips back, inhale looking forwards. If you need something to put under your hands, then grab something. So can you gain length in your spine again here? So don't think forward bend at the moment. Um, Joanna, lengthen the legs. Do you want to take the feet further apart? Okay, outside edges of the feet parallel to the edges of your mat. Push through the outside edges of the feet to activate the outer edge of the, um, the outside seam of the legs. That's active. The inner seam of the leg is more passive because it's releasing. Draw up through the front line of the legs, the shins, knees, quads. Relax the back of the legs. Look forwards. Keep pushing into the outside edges of the feet so the legs are super strong and straight. Push front of thigh to back of thigh. Sternum draws forward, so we're lengthening the spine still. And now fold down. And as you fold down, lift your sit bones up and almost maneuver the pelvis over the leg bones. You want like somebody pulling your sit bones up towards the sky. Then lift up again. Look forwards towards the camera. That's it. Take the sternum forwards more, shoulder blades down your back. Lift the sit bones up again. Can you take yourself further forwards of your, sit, of your leg bones and then come down again? This is what helps bring you towards the earth. One last time. Inhale. Lengthen the spine, sternum draws forwards, lift the sit bones a little bit more, and release down. Now just rest wherever you are. By rest, I mean stay still in the pose, not relax all the muscles. And the ones that need to work need to still work. Coming off pathway, you can heel to the feet in a little bit. And to the bench, you the toes point out and the heels drop in. And then you're going to bring your elbows onto your thighs and the bench to your hands. Now sink low. Okay. Draw the tailbone down the front of the pelvis up for four stars. And then link your little fingers together. And you're going to pull apart, thumbs point up. 
bringing that into the solar plexus area. Have a sense of drawing apart strongly. Sink the sit bones down. Sink the tailbone down. Breathe deeply, finding the sense of stability and strength. Sink a little lower if you can. Yeah. And then bring the hands to the ground. Heel toe the feet in a little bit more. And then see if you can come into a squat. You may need to put something under your heels. Rolling the mat up or a block. Again, you're trying to sink sit bones down. Noticing where the shoulders are. Okay, then fingertip ground straight and flex. Heel toe the feet in a little bit more. Um, grab a brick, facing between the knees. Then you turn side facing the feet. So, from here, you're going to bend down low, squeeze the brick to engage the outer hip, and then the arms forward. And then just as if you were doing cat cow, maneuver each segment of your spine as you start to lift up into Utkatasana. Remember that you're keeping length through your lower back. Take the gaze up beyond the fingertips. Widen the arms if the shoulders feel tight and you feel like you've lost space there. Shift the weight into the shins. If you do skiing, it's that action of um, pushing into the fronts of your boots. And then release down, straightening the legs. And again, bend the knees, sink low, shift the weight into the shins, which helps to pull the feet back. And then start to rise, and maneuver your pelvis as you rise. So you're trying to um, arrange your spine as you come up. Shoulder blades down the back. And release. One last one. Lots of strength and stability being built. Bend the knees. Squeeze the brick to engage the outer hip. Shift the weight into the shins as you start to rise. Turning the pelvis as you go. Can you find space? Can you just be? And release. Good. Just rest in Uttanasana. You can bring the fingertips to the ground, onto bricks, or hold on to the elbows. Okay, and then just come down for a moment. So, this is what this looks like. A little bit of play. Um, Crow pose, a customer. So we're going to start on bricks. Um, so last week we were doing squat, but with the, the heels coming down and the knees apart. Okay, we're going to start off in this, then we're going to grab bricks. We're going to stand on the bricks. And do exactly the same thing. In fact, we might just start up here actually. So if you grab your bricks, <clears throat> bring the feet together, 
the stamping on your bricks. It's like your birds on perches. <laughs> We're losing the flower metaphors and moving into birds in flight. So from here, the feet stay together. Okay, big toes touch, that's it. And then you want to draw the hands out. My knees are up near my shoulders. Okay, and you're trying to sink your heels as much as you can, but stretch the arms out. So Zoe, arms on the inside of the legs. So the knees, it's a little bit like a child's pose. So imagine that you're doing child's pose, but um, upright. That's it. How much can you extend the arms out? So find more length through the spine. And now slide the hands back. and spread the fingers, that's it. So the knees are right up near the armpits. And now, can we lift up as one unit? So clamp the knees into the outer upper arms, and then I want you to lift your heels, taking the gaze forward, see if you can just transfer the weight into the hands. And then you might find that we can just lift off, keeping the gaze forward. Don't drop your heads, otherwise the pivotal balance will sink you towards the earth. So just play. You might find that what you end up doing is just staying on your, the very tips of your toes, which is fine. Remember, there's no striving. One day it will just will just pop up. So you like, oh. <laughs> so it's fine to just stay on the tips of the toes and work with this sense of um, balance and pivotal, pivotal balance and strength. But this is not so much about strength in the arms. It's, it really is about finding your balance and almost this sense of um, uh, containment on the inside. Okay, and then if you're up, hold it there. Well done. And release. Yay! <laughs> And then coming off of your perches, and we'll use these for um, <coughs> a nice back opening. So um, one brick horizontal that matches the end of your mat, and then one brick um, vertically down your mat, and they're on their middle setting. Yeah. So you get to rest the arms a little bit, and we'll just. Um, Decompress the shoulders. <clears throat> so with this, you're looking at placing the brick, the lower part of the brick, um, just in line with the lower ribs. Keep the knees bent. This is like a version of fish pose. So the the thin line of the brick matches your spine. And then you're turning your pelvis towards the heart to see lower. And then just lengthen the arms out, almost like airplane wings, but not quite horizontal. And you can either keep the knees bent here or you can straighten the legs. Make sure that the, if you straighten the legs, that the legs are together. And just have a sense of creating space around your shoulder blades.
So you're sensing the shoulder blades dropping towards the earth, so away from the rib cage. And in this shape, becoming aware of your breathing. As you inhale, can you feel breath expanding the back of your ribs, the lower back ribs? Just. And then, can you feel your breath filling the side ribs? So can you feel those expanding out? And expanding laterally. Then finally, can you feel the fronts of the lungs filling? The, the expansion of the front of the rib cage is the lungs fill. The back sides front. And then be aware of what happens as you exhale. Now, can you slide your shoulder blades towards your brick? It's almost like you're, you're trying to hug the edges of your brick. As you exhale, you squeeze. As you inhale, you release. And then finally, in the lift the arms up towards the sky, keeping the palms facing one another and the arms parallel to one another. And then as you exhale, there's almost you can imagine holding onto a block in between the hands. As you exhale, take the arms back. See how far they can descend. And then inhale, lift them up. Exhale, take them back. Last one. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, take them back. And then just holding them back. Make sure the tailbone is drawing towards the heels. You then bring your fingertips almost as if you wanted to touch the wall behind you. And also at the same time, allowing them to descend towards the earth. Then you know, releasing the arms, bending the knees. And you're just going to wiggle the bricks that's under your back out and then replace the head back on the head brick. Keep the knees bent and just tilt the edge of your brick slightly towards your skull. And then if you turn the your head very slightly off center, you will find a tendon that can get quite tight. We can hold a lot of tension here. You want to just oscillate 
slightly when you sham that. You will know when you've got it because it's it's quite painful. And take your head to the opposite side. Again, it's just very slightly off center. You might need to wriggle around a little bit to find it. But once you've found it, just really gently oscillate. And then finally, just resting for the back of the skull, so right on the, the occipital point, right on the inner edge of your brick. And then take the arms out and allow the back of the neck to be expanded for you. So the shoulders are relaxed. It's almost like doing Jara Hava Bandha with the, uh, the chin lock. The chin is drawn right in as we lift the, the heart. We're just straightening first one leg. And the other. Notice if that changes anything to do with the neck and the shoulders. And finally, taking the brick out and just resting the head down flat.
Starting to deepen your breath. And bring your awareness back into your body, feeling your body resting on the earth. It matters less what we do in our practice and more how and why we practice. So a poem for you. Despite further pleas for ease and safety, there are many days when reality doesn't quite line up with what I choose. Break down, letting go. Surrendering even the illusion of control. Breathing into the unknown. Sometimes that is what life holds. Practice hasn't brought an end to pain, but it has honed my willingness to experience the moment and sometimes see perfection unfolding in ways I wasn't big enough to plan, much less predict. Practice isn't about achieving a goal. It is not a means to pole vault over suffering. It is my way of looking life in the face and saying yes to all its disparate gifts. Practice keeps me awake when I would sleep and reminds me it's the journey unfolding in this very moment. It's the journey that reveals the truth and not the destination. When you're ready, a new movement to fingers, toes, wrists and ankles. And gently in your own way, making your way up into sitting. As always, taking a moment to offer deep gratitude to your body, your practice, everything that it does for you. Thank you very much. Namaste.